learn a jump transition? Goes like that. Steer your kite up, carve into the wind, pop off the water, pull that bar down, park your kite, redirect your kite, land it and ride it out. But there's way more to it. Stylish! What is the most important part of a jump transition? There are many aspects, like the board, the kite, your carve, your timing, but there is one thing that really stands out. We'll look at that afterwards, but first we're going to have a look at the entire overview of a jump transition and especially how to steer your kite. Ride in with medium speed on a crosswind course with your kite at 11. Slowly steer your kite up to 12 until your middle strut is parallel to the wind. At that moment you carve hard until the board points straight into the wind. Park your kite at 12.30 as you pop off the water with the bar all the way down. Redirect your kite to the riding direction at the apex of your jump and dive the kite back in the wind window to gain power and ride away with speed. Let's have a look at some of the key points from the jump transition and especially the timing of the kite. When you go for your jump transition, you steer your kite up towards 12 and you pop into the wind. You let your kite pass 12 and then park it just after that at either 12.30 or 11.30. If you steer it any further than that, um, your kite is going to fly slightly out of the wind window. You'll have a harder landing and a lot of trouble to gain speed after landing and riding away. Next to that, you want to redirect your kite just after you reach the apex of your jump. If it's a very low jump transition, you can redirect it on the apex. If you're doing a higher jump transition, you'll want to redirect it a little bit after the apex of your jump. And then we get to what I think is the most important part of a jump transition, and that is the board and your carve upwind. I have a few exercises for that, which we're going to look in later. But first of all, let's look close up on the jump transition and what to do with the board. Enter on a crosswind course with medium speed and carve hard as you steer your kite up. Carve all the way towards the wind so you take off in an upwind direction. Push off on your back foot and spot your landing to twist back to the right. Point your board towards a new riding direction and follow the power of the kite before carving back to a crosswind course. One of the key aspects, and in my opinion, the most important part of the jump transition is your carve upwind. It is very important that you carve far upwind and take off into the wind as you wanna divert all that crosswind speed into speed upwind. If there's any crosswind speed left or any sideways movement, your kite is going to fly out of the wind window and you won't have power to ride away or do a soft landing. So in my opinion, this is the most important part. I have a little exercise that you can try, which helps with your carving, because it's very important to actually push your heels in, but more about that after the exercise. So just have a look at it first. Ride in on a crosswind course with medium to high speed and kite at 45 degrees. Lean back and carve hard against the power of the kite by pulling on your toes and pressing down on your heels. Just before you lose all your speed, get back on top of the board and continue riding on a crosswind course. You might have to steer the kite for speed. If you want to perform a good carve, it's very important to shift your weight back towards your back foot so your board actually goes into a turn. Next to that, you want your board on an edge. You do this by pulling up on your toes and pressing in on those heels so the board goes on an edge through the water. If you don't go on edge, you're just going to slide out. Next to that, um, try not to block your back leg. So keep your back leg a little bit bent because if you just block that one out, your, your tail is going to slide out and that's going to make it very hard to keep your edge or basically you'll lose it. And then there's one more thing. If you keep your center of gra or your weight very close to the water, you can put more force onto your board. So it's very important that you get your butt close to the water. Next up, we're going to have a look at the jump transition with a loop out. 
The timing when you redirect your kite after the jump transition is the same if you do a loop out or just a normal one. One thing that I would say is very important on the loop out is that you pull your bar all the way down and steer hard. If you don't pull it all the way down and steer hard, your kite is going to make a very big loop and that is going to generate more power. And that's not really what we want. We want minimal amount of power, but still enough to get us going. Next to that, it's very important to follow the power of the kite downwind. Don't start edging when your kite goes into a loop because that will create a very explosive power. Just follow it downwind and carve to a crosswind angle just after the kite looped. Next up, let's have a look at the back roll jump transition. Your entry and kite steering should be similar to the normal jump transition. But this time you carve even longer and look over your front shoulder to initiate a rotation on the takeoff. Spot your landing as soon as possible after the takeoff, point your board in a new riding direction and follow the kite before going to a crosswind course. One of the key differences between a back roll jump transition and a normal jump transition is that for the back roll you carve a lot longer into the wind. Instead of taking off straight into the wind, you can actually carve for a little bit longer which will initiate your rotation. This might also make a back roll jump transition slightly easier on the takeoff because you are carving for longer. But the kite steering can be a little bit harder as you're adding a rotation. The timing though stays exactly the same. So redirect your kite just after the apex of your jump. And with that, we get to the end of this video. Give me the thumbs up if you have enjoyed it, subscribe if you wanna see more, and just place a comment if you have any questions or requests on upcoming SA Masterclass videos. For now, I would say goodbye, hope you enjoyed it. See you on the next one.